world-renowned architects are carving villas into cliff faces, balancing hotels on glistening beachfronts, building entire towns, and constructing a massive new airport so people can get there. The vast Red Sea project is set to create 70,000 new jobs and deliver a $5.3 billion boost to the Saudi economy. But it will be built on land that is ecologically rich and in need of protection. In today's video, we will be showing you a $5 billion Saudi Desert Mega Resort. Without further ado, let's begin. Saudi Arabia will soon be home to a $5 billion Terry yacht titled Pangeos. The new project is shaped like a turtle and will accommodate up to 60,000 people. On completion, Pangeos will become the largest floating structure ever built. Proposed and designed by Italian design studio Lazzarini, Pangeos takes its name from Pangea, the supercontinent that existed millions of years ago during the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic eras. Inside Saudi Arabia's Oxygen, the biggest floating city in the world Lazzarini added. Translating this into a somewhat futuristic expression, Pangeos extends its length for 550 meters, 1,800 feet, and measures 610 meters, 2,000 feet. At its widest point, the wings, if realized, the turtle-shaped vessel will become the world's largest structure ever built. The floating yacht will see 19 villas and 64 apartments on each wing of the turtle-shaped Terry yacht. While the interiors of Pangeos are yet to be revealed, Lazzarini expects $8 billion to be invested in construction, with a timeline of eight years. Pangeos will also be comprised of nine different bows, which are further divided into several blocks. The bows begin from the entrance of the port area to the main square, which extends into a wide terraced villa and subsequently leads to private houses, buildings, and rooftop terraces, with an upper shell zone that offers the landing of various flying vehicles. In the lower space, the design team houses 30,000 cells or cluster compartments and provides an unsinkable floating solution for the basement, which is conceived to be realized mainly in steel. Pangeos will feature a rooftop garden, mall beach club, and a terrace shipyard infrastructure that is 650 meters wide and 600 meters long, providing direct access to the sea. While it is proposed for Saudi Arabia, Pangeos is designed to sail around the world nonstop, as it will be equipped with virtually endless green energy supplies. Powered by nine HTS engines of 16,800 horsepower each, Pangeos is expected to cruise at a maximum speed of five knots, 5.7 miles per hour or 9.2 kilometers per hour, drawing its power from ocean waves and the solar panel's covered roof. In addition, the virtual spaces of the watercraft can also be purchased under an NFT collection, Lazzarini said, adding that users will be to collect certain content and access the virtual properties with their credentials. The same credentials will also work as a property deposit in case of a real construction, the design studio said. The island is surrounded by more than 170 different types of coral, and these natural wonders were the inspiration for the Foster Plus Partners designed resort, aptly named Coral Bloom. The studio incorporated the colors and form of the reef into the buildings of the hotel, which look almost as though they drifted up on shore. A new three-kilometer crossing will connect it and the other Shura Island hotels to the mainland and two further resorts, Southern Dunes and Desert Rock. Southern Dunes will feature all the luxury that you'd expect from a high-end hotel, but for those of us who quite like the idea of living under a rock, its neighbor will offer something pretty different. With villas built into the mountainside, Desert Rock boasts the kind of architecture that could only emerge from the rugged Arabian terrain. In a design conceived by Oppenheim Architecture, guests will enter through a hidden valley nestled between the mountains. The idea is to connect them with nature and the local culture of the region. All of these hotels look great, but you've got to be able to get to them. And the answer to that is the construction of an entirely new international airport. Inspired by desert dunes, it'll consist of a series of outward-facing shells. The idea here is to be an anti-airport airport, a stress- and hassle-free environment. Passengers will be taken through a tranquil, streamlined arrival process, complete with a mini-oasis. 
the new airport will be strategically located within a three-hour flight of more than 250 million people and within eight hours of 80% of the world's population. The remote location, more than 500 kilometers away from Jeddah, means that a dedicated coastal village is being built to house the 14,000 employees who will eventually work here. The village acts as a self-sustaining little city, with its own catering and medical facilities. The Red Sea Development Company wants all of this to be created and maintained sustainably. Their goal is for the project to be run entirely on renewable energy and to minimize disruption to the surrounding environment. But is it really possible for a scheme this big, one designed to put the region on the global tourism map, to be truly sustainable? The answer is yes, but the challenges are immense. Biological diversity is being encouraged through the strategic planting of mangroves, seagrass, corals, and land vegetation. And many of the project's buildings are being designed with the environment in mind and will be optimized to reduce energy consumption. The hotels on Shura Island will be made from lightweight materials and manufactured off-site, allowing for a more energy-efficient construction process. Their location, which at first glance seems random, is actually extremely deliberate. They are placed to not only avoid any disruption of the island's mangrove swamps, but to establish a defensive wall against erosion. Back at the international airport, shaded areas and natural ventilation will help minimize its reliance on air conditioning. Even its overall design is aimed at avoiding waste. It's made up of five mini terminals that can be strategically open and closed depending on demand. Desert Rock will draw on the centuries-old architectural practices of the region's indigenous people. By carving the buildings into the mountainside, it will take advantage of the thermal properties of stone and be naturally cooler, requiring less energy for air conditioning. Many of the buildings will also help to regenerate native flora through special rainwater catchment systems placed throughout the resort, while any excavated material, including stone, will be largely reused in building construction. While 22 of the region's islands are being developed, 75% of the archipelago will be left untouched, with nine islands designated as special conservation zones. The overall project will have no connection to the national grid. Instead, the world's largest battery storage facility is being built so that the development can run on solar power. There are special ecological considerations to be made at almost every turn too. There will be no waste to landfill and no single-use plastic. Three seawater reverse osmosis plants will be built, and where possible, the company is recycling wastewater, reuse it at the landscape nursery, or create new wetland habitats. Designing and constructing a Belgium-sized development in the desert, juggling an airport, cave hotel, and whole new infrastructure system is not easy. The engineering and design teams have to collate acres of information from the intensity of the sun on any given day, to the erosion of island coastlines, to where best to place indigenous plants. So guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day, and I will see you in the next video.